Hey, this is Lori Kilpatrick. This is probably a little more of the life part of the oils in life. Um, you know, we all are on our path and we're all learning things in the way that it applies to us and the way that we can absorb it. And um, a little while ago, this was a very impactful concept. And it was that you only have right now. And while that's true, I don't, I didn't really know at the time how to live that way. I don't always, but if you are focused on the future, you're missing the now. And if you are drowning in the past, you're missing the now too. So your present time is very, very important. And in addition to that, recently, a very wise woman told me, um, we went and visited her farm and she had goats, or uh, she did have goats, but she also had sheep. Hair sheep that shed so she doesn't have to shave them, but that's another thing. I had chickens and rabbits and goats and um, turkeys and rabbits. I already said that. It doesn't matter. Anyway, and chickens, for the most part, are not necessarily the wisest of animals. So I, I just bluntly had asked her, who's more stupid? Are, are sheep as stupid as they say? And she looked at me and she said, we're pretty new friends. And she was like, God made sheep to be sheep. And sometimes we ask them to do things that they were never made to be. So they appear stupid because we're asking them to do something that they were never intended to do. And I was like, <laughs> but how wise is that? So as a mother raising children and I homeschool, so it's like extra intense. It's just raising, drawing out what God put in them is difficult, especially when you have this preconceived notions of what they should have. And you literally have a checklist of what they need to know in order to pass. Because sometimes there are things that this child was never intended to be or do or know. And making sure that he's got a broad, is occupying memory space that could be used for what he was made for. I know it's not popular, but what if, what if, you know, instead of getting F's and failing people, we say, oh, well, that's not, that's not your wheelhouse. That's not where you're good at. Let's find where you are good at. What if we did that? Because I did the other to begin with, and it did not go well, and it caused a lot of mistrust and a lot of doubt and a lot of guilt and shame with my oldest. And now, in trying to figure out where he really excels at, which, you know, it's not like it's not figure out from nothing, but instead of saying, you're bad at this, here's your F, we say, well, that's not where you're really strong. Let's, let's see where you are really strong. Because there's that, that heart issue of, is it really that this isn't a strong suit of yours, or is that it's not coming easy to you, and you don't want to put forth the effort? So, where your heart is is so important and so frustrating, because that's a strictly between you and God thing, that if you don't even have plugged into that you can't share it you know because you can only be as honest with other people as you are with yourself so anyway I just wanted to share that little nugget that maybe we need to pivot about how we look at some things in our lives things that we're feel guilty about or things that we feel shame about perhaps that was not anything that we were intended to do in the first place and us trying to covet somebody else's skill us trying to be who we were never made to be um is what is causing the angst, not that we're not good at it or not that we've failed at it, but because that was never our wheelhouse in the first place. So I urge you to be who you were made to be because it is amazing and it is unique and it is necessary and vital for the world right now. All right, I love you. Have a beautiful and blessed day. Go have fun and make good choices.